thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Got a big show for you tonight, folks. Emerald Lagasse, welcome to Emerald Live. Big, big show for you tonight. You know the flavors of Southwestern cooking, right? They're rich. They're lively. It's smoky and spicy. It's crunchy and cheesy. And just a little bit wild. Speaking about wild, we got Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Live, baby. West cuisine, Doc. Oh, you know, yeah. the South and the West. And the West, <laughs> and they meet, and it's Southwest <laughs> spicy. Ooh. Mm. Chili. Ah. Chunky. Yes. Ooh. Cheesy. Yes. yes. Hey, it's South by Southwest tonight, right here on Emerald Live. Unbelievable. Yes. I got to tell you, I'm excited about tonight's show. Uh, those flavors really excite me, and we're going uh, to do some really great dishes tonight. A uh, little Southwest cooking tonight. Delicious. The real deal. You want to know what's on the menu tonight, folks? Yeah. Well, all right. I do, too. <laughs> Actually, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a little trick using some guava juice. And we're going to take that guava juice and make it into a delicious margarita. Because yeah. you've got to have a little margarita tequila when you're in that Southwest <laughs> kind of thing. Then I'm going to show you how to make a cheesy duck tamale. Real simple tamales, the real way in the corn husk, steamed. How about a roasted chayote soup with black bean relish? Does that turn you on a little bit there? I'm going to show you how to make that. And Mojo Roasted Pork. <laughs> with some sweet potatoes done quesadilla style. Ooh. Mojo Pork. I like that. <laughs> Feeling the mojo going on right now. <laughs> and then we're going to show you about some fried cinnamon ice cream. Mm. Oh, yeah. Let's start with the margarita, shall we? Let's take the edge off. <laughs> no, I want to show you a trick. You buy this guava juice. It's really good. What guava juice tastes like is the uh, most common question. I guess it tastes like, yeah, it tastes like guava. I mean, it's like, you know, what does rabbit taste like? Chicken. No, it doesn't. It tastes like rabbit. Anyhow, guava kind of tastes pineapple, strawberry sort of combination, that kind of flavor. And what I do for this uh, special drink, I take the guava juice and uh, pour it inside of my ice cube trays. See, I have a lot of these around because a lot of times what I'll do is like when I make stock, like chicken broth or shrimp broth, I'll use these and fill them up, have four, five, six of them stacked in the freezer. And then when you're ready for the stock, you just take one out, pop a few cubes out, and you got stock. But for this drink, you take the guava juice stock, freeze it up, and... Um, now you got guava ice cubes. Oh, man. You know what I mean? You got some guava cubes. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Guava cubes. No. Whoa, why is he so happy? <laughs> oh, you got guava cubes. <laughs> so what I do, when you're ready, I just sort of pop these babies out here, I hope. Maybe not. And what we're going to do is take the guava cubes. Oh, they work. Trust me. See? Good for the kids. Put it on a stick. Ha ha. So now we're going to take the guava cubes here and pop a few more babies out. And then to the guava cubes, what we're going to do is now take a little lime juice and a little simple syrup. 
for the sweetness. Let's do a few more of these things here. Hey, we're really cooking here. We're not flopping guava cubes out. So now we got the guava cubes going on here. Now we're ready to do it. So, little triple sec. Mm. Some good tequila. Mm. Oops. <laughs> and then you can ask yourself, you know, would you like salt? No salt. Some people prefer salt. I use a little lime like this if I'm going to salt it. Dip it here. See? Oh, yeah, babe. And a little more salt right here. Then when you're ready to go, guava cubes are in there, inside the blender. So what happens when you use like piles of ice cubes is you're really kind of watering things down, which is why I came up with this guava cube thing. So you could do the same thing with, uh, with lime juice. That would be a good thing. You could do a combination of lime and or a little lemon. I just simply garnish mine with just a little lemon like such. And there you have it, a guava margarita, right? Oh, yeah. This first dish that we're going to do is called tamales, which I really love tamales. And uh, what you do is you can buy in the store dry corn husks. And you get them, they're really dry. And what you got to do is reconstitute them. So you just pour in a bowl some hot water over them for about 10, 15 minutes. Bring them back. Now, you can use fresh corn husks. Give you a little bit more corn flavor. These are the ones that are moist now. Got rid of the water, dried them out. For this particular easy tamale, here's what we're going to do. I actually took grits, which is not normally in tamales, and I put it in the food processor to bust them down a little bit. Stone grits. You with me so far? Yeah. To that, I take a little warm chicken broth and pour it right over. And then what you're going to do is you're going to let this sort of absorb a lot of the liquid in about 10 minutes, that's what it looks like. You see how it's absorbed it and it's broken the grits down? To that, I flavor it with cumin. You know what cumin is. You've got some in your pantry. When's the last time you used it? A week ago. My kind of girl. All right. We're coming to your house, Doc and I, for dinner. All right. Now, to that, masarina, which is very fine corn flour. We're going to work this in here, making a dough. When we come back, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Doc Gibbs in the MLS Band. Everybody cooking Southwest flavors tonight. Little guava margarita. Mmm. Guava ice cubes. Like I said, you can do lime ice cubes, lemon, orange. Really good. Oh, you hear the train. <laughs> During the commercial break, what I've been doing, one of the important ingredients in tamales is lard. It's a pork fat thing. Yeah. So I've been creaming that lard in there. And it's nice and soft. You do the same technique with butter if you're making cakes. But if you just joined us, we're making tamales. A little duck and cheese tamale, pepper cheese. So, everybody's with me on the cumin, grits, masarina, chicken broth. Come on, it's not rocket science here. I added a little pinch of salt. Now, we got the lard going. To that, 
We're going to add some baking powder. We're going to actually turn the machine off right now. Oh, look at that. Then we're going to take that mozzarella grit mixture. And we're going to add it. It's a very quick, easy way to make tamales. And when you're going to make tamales, I mean, this is not, when you make tamales, this is not like I'm going to make four or five. I mean, that's because they take time. You're going to make tamales, make like 40, you know, 40, 50, 60, have a block party, you know, get a couple of those pin pinatas, whack the, you know, out of them, <laughs> candy that would be, and have a ball, you know what I mean? Put your sombrero on and, you know what I mean? I know what you mean. But they take time. Yeah. Now, let's start mixing that, those ingredients together. While that's all coming together, oh, yes. Now, let's talk about pobleno peppers. They're hot, but they're not super hot. They're like right in the middle as far as I am, and they get great taste. And if you blister them on the stove, meaning char them, they even get like a better flavor. So I have some of those. I have pepper jack cheese, and I've got cooked duck meat. You could have chicken meat, turkey meat, whatever kind of meat you want. You could do beef. Now, here's what we do. The tamale dough is ready. So, you take a husk. Matter of fact, take two. Kind of put them together like a little package. You see, to overlap them like that. You take a little bit of the tamale mixture, pop it right in the center. Oh, yeah, babe. Then I take a few of the pobleno peppers, press them in there. Some of the duck meat, press it in there. Some of the jack cheese, press them in there. <laughs> Then you got to sort of like make a little package. So I fold one over, fold another over, fold this one over, hold it, make a little package, turn it over so that it'll stay. Okay? Now, you can either use string, butcher's twine. One of the things that I do is I just take one of the corn husks and I'll just find the end of it and I'll just cut sort of like a little ribbon and I'll use that right in the center and tie it up you with me oh, yeah. the next thing for a great tamale is you gotta steam them that's what it takes. That's why I said it's not one of those, I'm going to make four things. You know, if you're going to steam them, steam a whole batch of them. They keep great in the icebox. That would be the refrigerator. <laughs> How I prepare the steamer. I don't have a big fancy thing here. I got a pot. I got some water. You can see right here, I got one of those steamer inserts that you can buy inexpensively, fanned out. I got some corn husks. And then what you do is you got to give them a little room to breathe. You can't stack them on each other. You want them to cook evenly. So I go around the outside first, okay? Then the inside. Everybody's happy. And we're going to put a lid on them. We're going to steam them for about 12 to 14 minutes, okay? That's the tamale. What, uh, what other makes a great tamale? What makes another great tamale is what you serve it with, the sauces. When we come back, I'll show you that. Stick around, Doc Gibbs.
Welcome back. Emeril Lagasse doing a little Southwest cuisine tonight. Oh, yes, indeed. You ever been to Santa Fe? Anybody been to Santa Fe? Yeah. Oh, that's some good Southwest food there. Hmm. I, uh, I don't know what got into me. I must, must have had a late night flashback or something, but I was telling you that you got to steam the tamales for 10 to 15 minutes. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> oh, goodness. Actually, you got to steam them for an hour and then let them rest for 10 to 15 minutes before you open up the package. See, I was already opening the package before. That's how my brain is already down the highway. So, they're steaming beautifully, okay? Check your water, you wanna make sure you got enough in there. So now, while those are steaming, we're gonna start the chayote, chayote soup. This would be a chayote. In Louisiana, we call these merlotons, also known as alligator pears. But in uh, Central America, South America, Southwest, chayotes. They uh, feel like a pear. They're not quite as sweet as a pear, but they are a little sweet. They're great for stuffing. We do all kinds of things with them. But they're hard. <laughs> The Mets use these in spring training sometimes. <laughs> They're a little less expensive than baseballs. So what you got to do is you got to cover them with water, bring them up to a boil and simmer them until they're fork tender. There's a really, really hard skin on the outside of these. Okay? So once they're fork tender, one of the things that you're going to do for the soup is you got to peel them. See that hard skin? Now, if you don't care about the hard skin, you're not gonna bother me. But you gotta peel that hard skin. Then inside, there's a seed. So, what you do is cut them in half. See the seed? Right there? So we're gonna take this little seed out of here. Beautiful. show you again split it in half you got that seed right there it's a very hard seed so you want to take it out it's not quite as hard as like that avocado thing but they are hard all right now I was telling you earlier when we started the show how you know how they get really great flavors out of the southwest food is not only just the spices with chilies, and, uh, but it's also cooking techniques. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do some big slices like this. Put them in a bowl. You can do this in the oven. You can do it in a skillet, but also you can do it in a grill. Because what we want to do is we want to take these now, toss them with a little bit of oil. A little bit of oil. And then what we're going to do, a little salt, we're going to stop putting them on the grill and let them start getting charred. Okay? Charred. When we come back, I'll show you not only the tamales, but these charred merlotons. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Back in. sampling a little southwest flavors tonight well we really haven't sampled anything yet but we're getting close we're in the stretch all right the tamales one hour steaming medium heat turn the heat off let them babies rest for about 10 or 15 minutes all right they'll get nice and you'll see to that i have a little salsa verde here 
okay? Little pepper, tomatillo, little lime juice, garlic. Oh, yeah, babe. And just a little bit of sour cream. The chayotes, they are getting charred, which means they're getting that smoky sort of thing going on. Now, here's what we're going to do. To start that soup, a little oil, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add some onion to that. Now, to the onion, we're going to add some salt. And the heat of what I'm going to use today is cayenne pepper, okay? Just a little bit. Now, once that cooks for about five or six minutes, the tamales are resting. Now we're going to add cumin. And we're going to add garlic. Okay? Now to that, we're going to take some chicken broth. And we're going to add the chicken broth in here now. Now, comes up to a boil, we're going to turn the heat down, we're going to let it simmer. To that, what we're going to start adding now are the charred chayotes. And what's going to happen is that smoky flavor, <laughs> prisoner, <laughs> that smoky flavor is going to start cooking right into that soup. Because we've already got them fork tender already. So now it's just a matter of getting that smokiness. I'll give you an example. You've heard of chipotle peppers? Yeah. That's a smoked pepper. So they use a lot of that smoky stuff, which I absolutely love. They toast a lot of their seeds. They toast a lot of their spices to get those flavors as well. So now the merlotons in there. And now what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to bring it up to a boil and we're going to start letting it reduce. As it reduces, what's going to happen? Evaporation, concentration of flavors. All right. I can't take it anymore. No, I got to have one of those tamales. So what we're going to do, we're going to take, oh, yeah, babe. I got a little platter here. Now what we're going to do is take the tamales. I wish you could smell them. Well, you can. <laughs> but those poor folks at home, they're missing out. They don't have smell-o-vision. And it's a really a crying shame, don't you think? Could you imagine if you had a button? There I am, watching Emerald Live. And he serves up a tamale, and you could go, <laughs> and all of a sudden, you got a shot of tamale smell right through your television. Oh, I would be so happy if that would have, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. There he is. He just finished the chicken and sausage gumbo. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. That's next. That's the new season. <laughs> Smell-o-vision. Taste-o-vision. <laughs> you could just go, boom, and a tamale just comes right in your living room. Ah, nice, nice. Unbelievable. Like <laughs> so what I like to do to serve this up, we just cut that little ribbon package off. Set one there. Cut that ribbon package off. Now, you can either just let them fend for themselves, or sometimes what you can do is you can slice them open like this, and then like a potato, you just push it open like that. See, and there's the tamale. Huh? Mm. Oh, yeah, I wish you could smell. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so this would be like a decent app portion. 
open it up a little bit. And then just a little salsa verde, right? Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, a little sour cream. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, bam! Oh. So there you have it. All right, so the chayote soup. After about 45 minutes, this is what it looks like, the evaporation thing. You see it right now? So here's what we're going to do. This is when we come. We're going to take some shrimps. Oh, yeah, babe. We're going to take some beautiful shrimps and some hot sauce, like a hot paste almost, and some chili powder, a little salt. We're going to toss the shrimps. Then we're going to let the shrimps <laughs> just stay there and get nice and happy. Then we're going to come and take the chayote soup. <laughs> we're going to take the chayote soup now. Take it off for a second. Get the boat motor out. Yeah. Get the boat motor going. And we're going to puree this up nice and nice. When we come back, not only am I going to show you, we're going to put the shrimps in here, but an unbelievable black bean relish to garnish it. We'll be right back. Stick around. The tamales are out there now, and during the commercial break, we pureed the merlotons, the chayotes, and now we got the base of the soup. We put it back on the heat now, simmering it low. Now is a perfect time before we add the shrimps in there. Taste it. Does it need to be reseasoned? Does it need more salt? Does it need more pepper? Wow. Oh, super. Nice bite at the end. Now we're going to put the shrimps in here. Okay? So now we just took a charred merloton or chayote soup into a charred chayote and shrimp soup. How happy are you, huh? Now let's talk about this. I got cooked black beans. To that I'm going to add garlic. Right. The juice of one lime. Some red pepper some green onions. Now, a little salt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fresh ground pepper. And what I like to do to this, shh, don't tell, they'll all be doing this now. You just take a little bit of good olive oil, Portuguese, Spanish, French, Italian. You just get a little bit of good olive oil like this, keeping it really, really simple. And then we'll fold this over. Now, let's let this marinate just for a little bit. Okay. So now that's going to marinate. Checking on our shrimp. Look, shrimp don't take long. That's the problem. People cooking shrimp. They cook them way too long. Look, it's got a built-in thermometer. And it's telling me that it's got like a minute or two and it's going to be ready. Now, while we're waiting on the shrimp, let's talk about this delicious thing called uh, a little mojo roasted pork. Mm. Because I get a lot of that www.foodnetwork.com over to the Emerald page. Emerald, help me. I don't know what to do with my pork tenderloins. <laughs> well, you've come to the right page, baby. <laughs> so, I've got my pork tenderloins right here. They usually come two to a pack. Don't ask me why, I don't make up the rules. But let's cook them. Let's have some fun. So I've got to put the mojo on them. You know what I mean? 
Nothing like getting a little mojo put on you. So here's what we do. We take a little bit of onion, cilantro. I love cilantro. I was telling you earlier about those hot chipotle peppers, right, smoked? Oh, yeah, we're going to put a little mojo on you right now. A little essence, some hot pepper, like a one jalapeno, and some green onion. All right? Wow. Now, to that, add a little salt. Now, if you have one of these guys, you realize there's a couple little little holes over here. <laughs> that's for a reason. So while that's happening, we go to this hole, that hole, back to this hole, over here to this one, back over to this one, over to that one, back to this one, and back over here. And we let them all go down there dripping nice and smooth. And then we say, hey, has it got enough? Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. Now what you want to do is you want to take some of that and smear it all over your pork tenderloins like this. You want to set your oven on about 375 degrees. And then once this marinates, now folks, if you got time, it's great to do this the day before. You'll get all the heat, all the flavor that you want. You see, the day before. Oh, yeah, babe. All right. We're mojoing. Oh, yes. We are putting the mojo on here. Yes. So, yes. I am mojo. Now, season it up. I'm going to use a little essence. A little Southwest essence would be great. Put it on the baking sheet with foil, okay? Wash your hands, because you know the police are watching you. <laughs> you can't see them, but they're peeking through your window. Trust me, the pork police. Yes, that would be the, that would be the ones driving the big pig cars down the street, you know? Onk, onk! Pork police is here. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going in the oven now. Folks, here's the thing. Don't overcook these poor Mojo pork tenders. Cook them to about 145. Take them out. Because you'd rather them rest five or ten minutes. Temperature's going to continue to go up. 150, medium, soigné. Yeah. Now, let's serve the soup, shall we? All right, I like a little cilantro, I like a little lime, and I'll tell you why in a second. Oh, that mojo is smelling good. Now, here's what we're gonna do, or well, at least what I like to do. I like to take the chayote and shrimp soup, okay? Right inside of the nice bowl like that, what a flavor it has. Then, I take a little bit of that delicious Black bean relish. Serve that right in the old center like that. And then I take some lime, really, really thin slices. Thin, thin, thin. And then I just take a little lime and lay that lime like that, like this. Some lime juice to perk it up a little bit. You can't see it, but it's getting perky. And then a little cilantro like that. And then, and then, you just take a little sour cream, a little dollop like this, and a little dollop like this, and then a little dollop like that. And there you have it, okay? Yes, yes, yes. When we come back, Mojo Pork.
Doc Gibbs and the MRI band. Oh, yeah. Or should I say, Chayote and Shrimp Soup and the band. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Southwest Cooking here. Pork tenderloins, 140, 145 degrees. Take them out of the oven. They let them rest. Like I said, five or eight degrees, they're going to go up. We're at about 152, 153. Hey, take it or leave it a couple of degrees, right? Let it rest. If you don't let it rest, you cut them. Just all the juice goes out. After they rest, then I layered the slices of the pork. Just like that. Then I took some whatever cheese you like. This is a little queso, a little mild cheese like a cheddar. Take a little bit of the tortilla. <laughs> now, nah, you got to be very careful. All right? I mean, you've got no glue here, so you got to be careful. Put them on a griddle. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, we're going to griddle them. Now, you got to be very careful when we're going to turn these things over. Okay? But it can be done. You could also fold it if you wanted to be safe. I believe that some of the cheese is going to help us here. I believe. <laughs> I believe in cheese. So we've got them going on right now. So uh, this is one of many, many things that you can do with these pork tenderloins. They really take marinade. They take seasoning, whether dry or wet, extremely well. That's how you can get creative with it. You could use orange. Sometimes I just take orange juice and garlic. Put it over it. Beautiful. Speaking about beautiful, I took some cinnamon ice cream, Doc. Don't get crazy on me now. And I made some, some uh, little ice cream balls like that, right? Then, you got to do this super cold. Don't even think about it if it's like even soft, because I've been there and I've done that, and I've had a meltdown several times, okay? Now, what we're going to do is make a quick sauce. We're going to take milk. We're going to take Mexican chocolate. Oh, yeah, babe. Got a big budget on this show. <laughs> a little butter. A little cinnamon. And vanilla. And we're going to make that into a, a sauce. Now, over here, a couple of eggs and some, like, molasses, caro syrup, uh, steam syrup. Because what's going to happen is we're going to take this ice cream ball. We're going to dip it in here really cold. Then we're going to ro roll it right in graham cracker crumbs. Okay? Are you with me? Yeah. And then when you roll it in the graham cracker crumbs, just kind of work with it fast. And then get it as soon as you can. I like to do it a couple of days in advance. Get it in there as soon as you can. Then when you're ready... Whoa! Whoa! Holy mackerel! Whoa! All right! What a save! Nice save. <laughs> That's what happens when you really cook on the show. <laughs> when you're ready, good and cold, hot oil. Oh. 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 But keep them good and cold. Good and cold. Yeah, yeah be careful. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> now, we got to come over here real quick and pray. Oh! Yes! Yeah. Yes! Now, this gets nice and golden brown. Let me show you what we do here, first of all, and then we'll go over to the quesadilla land. I like to take that chocolate sauce and just kind of spoon it in the bottom like that, right? Then, oh, oh, before you have a meltdown, we're melting. Inside there, a little more chocolate sauce. A little whipped cream. And one little cherry. And there you have that. Back over for the quesadilla. Oh! We clean it. 
We cut it. And now we need it. A little lime tremor, and you got an unbelievable quesadilla. I'm Emerald Lagasse. Thanks for joining me tonight. See you next time.